you, do you remember the one about the, the Archbishop? He, he dies and he goes to heaven where he thinks he should be going. <laughs> but when he gets there, St. Peter says, near you. Uh, you don't belong here. You've got to go to the other place. So I go to the other place. <laughs> the warmer place. <laughs> and, and two weeks later, there is frenzy knocking on, on, the, on the doors of heaven. And St. Peter goes and he opens and there's the devil standing on the doorstep. And Peter says, no, do you? What are you doing here? And the devil says, <laughs> you, you sent Bishop Tutu down there. He's causing so much trouble. <laughs> I've come to ask for political asylum. <laughs> Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu has died at the age of 90. The Nobel laureate was post-apartheid South Africa's moral compass and the driver of its troubled reconciliation process. It was Tutu who coined the term Rainbow Nation to describe the country's ethnic diversity. Desmond Mpilo Tutu was born in Klerksdorp in the then Transvaal on October 7, 1931. He was the only son of Zachariah and Aleta Tutu's four children. When he was 12, the family moved to Rudderport, outside Johannesburg, where his mother found work as a cook at the Nzenzeleni School for the Blind. Tutu had wanted to be a medical doctor, but his family couldn't afford to send him to university. Instead, he chose to become a teacher like his father. He studied at the Pretoria Bantu Normal College and went on to teach at Johannesburg Bantu High School and at Munsiville High School in Krugersdorp. But Tutu gave up teaching when the ravages of the Bantu Education Act became apparent. He returned to studying, this time at St. Peter's Theological College in Johannesburg. He married Nomalizo Lea Shintane, a teacher, on July 2, 1955. The couple went on to raise four children. Tutu was ordained as an Anglican priest in December of 1961 and travelled to King's College London, where he continued his studies and received his Master's in Theology in 1966. He returned to South Africa in 1975 and taking up residence in Soweto's famed Villakazi Street and was appointed Dean of St. Mary's Cathedral in Johannesburg. Both at home and abroad, Tutu's opposition to apartheid, which he often likened to Nazism, was vigorous and unequivocal. Tutu's finest hour came when he chaired the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which he set up to be a witness to, record, and in some cases grant amnesty to the perpetrators of apartheid relation human rights violations. The truth, Tutu had warned ahead of the first hearings in April of 1996, is going to hurt, and it did. On the TRC's second day, Tutu himself broke down, weeping, while listening to a victim describe how he was tortured by security police. In 1997, Tutu was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He underwent lengthy and successful therapy in Cape Town and New York, but otherwise continued his TRC work. He retired as Archbishop of Cape Town in 1996, whereupon he was made Emeritus Archbishop of Cape Town, an honorary title that is unusual in the Anglican Church. He continued to work as a global activist on issues pertaining to democracy, freedom and human rights. His friend, former President Nelson Mandela, went on to describe him as sometimes strident, often tender, never afraid and seldom without humour. His voice will always be the voice of the voiceless. That voice was now, however, aimed squarely at the ANC as Tutu set about condemning the government for failing to deal with corruption, poverty and the xenophobic violence in the townships. In August of 2006, Tutu urged former President Jacob Zuma to drop out of the ANC's presidential succession race and warned, in a public lecture, that he would not be able to hold his head high if Zuma, a man who had been accused of both rape and corruption, was made leader. By May 2013, Tutu had grown so disillusioned with the ruling party that he declared he was no longer able to vote for it. Tutu has received several awards for his humanitarian work as well as numerous doctorates and fellowships from universities around the world. In addition to the Nobel Peace Prize, which he received in October of 1984, 
He was awarded the Albert Schweitzer Prize in Humanitarianism in 1986, the Beckham and Therese Award in 1987, the Sydney Peace Prize in 1999, the Gandhi Peace Prize in 2007, and the US Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2009. He is survived by his wife, four children, and seven grandchildren.